This is the final topic in the DNA and proteins unit, um, and it's quite a big one, so it's split into two parts. Um, it really connects to lots of other topics, and so this is why I'm using the mind map here, is that uh, when we're looking at um, copying of DNA replication and PCR, um, that connects to biotechnology, uh, profiling and uh, DNA sequencing, transfer of genes, cell culture, which we get to in the next unit, um, and also phenotypic expression, um, all connect to how we are changing, manipulating, using DNA to make proteins or um, other uh, changes to organisms. Uh, so this is covered in the learning outcomes, but what we're going to look at in part one is around a number of these different techniques that are used really culminating in making genetically modified organisms. So restriction enzymes, electrophoresis, molecular probes, bacterial plasmids, and gene transfer techniques. Uh, so I'll step you through each of them individually and then we'll look at how they get combined uh, together. Um, so really what we're looking at here is how we can manipulate or move a gene of interest around the place. So a gene of interest is just any gene uh, that you want to study or uh, perhaps transfer from one organism into another. An example might be the human insulin gene, uh, which has been transferred from human pancreatic cells, where it's normally produced, uh, cut out and put into bacterial cells so that the bacterial cells can work as a little factory making lots and lots of insulin protein. And this is purified and used uh, by uh, patients with diabetes uh, to regulate their blood glucose by injecting recombinant uh, insulin. Recombinant just means it's made from recombining bits of DNA, so human DNA in bacterial cells. So uh, lots of different genes of interest uh, are used, um, and insulin, human insulin gene is just one example. Um, restriction enzymes is a useful tool. We've come across that previously uh, in the DNA profiling, so have a look at that. Electrophoresis, another useful technique for separating DNA by size. Uh, that was also covered in DNA profiling. So uh, the next one I want to talk about is molecular probes. So if you have cut up DNA, run it on electrophoresis, cut it up using restriction enzymes, run it on electrophoresis, you might want to find out which of those bands of DNA has the gene of interest in it. So here's DNA cut with restriction enzymes, run on gel electrophoresis. If you transfer that onto a membrane, so this is just the process of transferring onto what we call a nitrocellulose membrane, um, you want to know which of these three bands has your gene of interest. This is where probes come in. So probes are short segments of DNA or RNA which have some sort of molecular beacon or tag on them, uh, fluorescent or radioactive. So the DNA sample is denatured to make single-stranded DNA, and then the probes are hybridized to that. They have a complementary sequence, and so where they find the target sequence, they will bind by base pairing and stick onto that. So in this case, uh, they're bound to this middle band, and the fluorescent or radioactive label is showing, in this case it's an audio radiogram, so radioactive label is showing that that's the band that has the sequence that are interested in. So probes are used for finding which bit of DNA has your gene of interest. Bacterial plasmids are a really useful way of carrying around small pieces of DNA. Uh, so basically, uh, plasmids occur naturally in bacterial cells, so they have their genomic DNA, but also these little circles of DNA called plasmids. Um, in nature, uh, they have some extra genes on them, which uh, bacterial cells can share uh, within their population. But in biotechnology, we use them as little ways of carrying DNA around your gene of interest. If you just cut it out, uh, it can't survive within a cell with those free ends. Um, but by putting it in a plasmid, which is a loop of DNA, uh, you can then, your gene of interest uh, uh, can be used, manipulated, copied, transferred around the place. Um, and that's really shown here in this example of these gene transfer techniques. So first we'll look at uh, using uh, transfer of gene of interest into a bacterial cell. So uh, the gene of interest is inserted into a plasmid, and there's a video there you might want to watch. Uh, so you extract a plasmid from a bacterial cell, cut it with the restriction enzyme, so you've opened up the DNA. Here's your gene of interest that's been isolated from, say, the pancreas cell. Uh, there's the gene of interest there, and that will, if you've cut it with the same restriction enzymes uh, and you've got sticky ends, that will bind into your uh, plasmid. You then join that with a ligase enzyme. So now your gene of interest is in a plasmid. Um, that is uh, also shown here. So here's the insulin gene, for instance, gene of interest. 
put that gene into the plasmid sequence and you've got a loop of DNA there, which is a stable way to carry around that DNA. Uh, you can then conduct this process of electrical shock of the bacterial cells. You mix them with the plasmid, shock it, and then those plasmids can end up inside the cell, which is what's shown here. Grow those in culture. They will use that gene, gene of interest, the insulin, to make lots and lots of insulin protein, which you can then purify and uh, inject if you're a patient. And that's how we make a lot of recombinant proteins. Uh, if you're going to transfer genes of interest into plant cells, there's two main techniques for that. Uh, first one here is shown is gene gun. You put the plasmid on gold particles and actually fire those at plant cells. Um, the little bullets of gold go through the cellular cell wall into the cells. You probably kill a few cells, uh, but a few of them end up with the plasmid inside them. There's also a special uh, type of bacterium with a special type of plasmid in it called agrobacterium and the TI plasmid. This bacterium has actually evolved to transfer whatever gene it has into uh, plant cells. So you put your gene of interest into the TI plasmid uh, and that will introduce the DNA into uh, the plant cells, into their chromosomes, and then from those cells you can grow a whole plant with the new gene and the new trait in it. Um, for transferring into animal cells, the two main techniques are microinjection and viral vectors. So uh, Here's a, a human cell or an animal cell that might be an egg cell, for example, with a very, very small, this is you're just showing a diagram of it, a syringe here, but with a small glass um, syringe, you might inject that DNA into the nucleus. Um, or in this case, you could put the DNA gene of interest into a virus uh, and infect the cell with that virus. Either way, you can get that gene of interest into uh, the target animal cell and it will produce the protein as well. Um, if the target cell is an egg or an embryonic stem cell, you might be able to grow a whole animal from that. So here's an example of making what we call a transgenic animal. Donor egg from a goat, human gene, uh, the genes micro-injected into the egg cell and that egg cell is fertilized and grown up in a host to make a transgenic goat. Uh, the goat then produces whatever protein from the gene of interest uh, in its milk, and then you can harvest the protein from there. So this is an example from a few years ago where transgenic goats were made in Brazil to produce uh, an enzyme that could help uh, with a genetic disease called Gaucher's disease. So um, you're able to make and harvest uh, any protein you want by uh, having goats produce it in their milk. Um, so there's a few other videos here uh, that can help you with some of those bits of the process. Um, it is complicated, so go through it step by step. The important thing is that you understand and recognize each of those techniques that are used to make the recombinant DNA plasmid and get that into cells. Uh, another key thing I just want to say is that don't mix up your different levels. Inserting DNA into the plasmid is at one level, that's happening at a molecular level. Getting plasmid into the cell is happening at a microscopic level. Um, so the techniques are quite different. So to get molecular inserts, we're using recombinant enzymes, ligase enzyme and plasmid. They're all molecules. Um, to get DNA into cells, we're using viral vectors, microinjection, uh, bacteria. All these things are microscopic, not molecular level. So um, go through those, write some notes. Uh, write about lots of definitions, do diagrams, and you should get the process.